All right, hi, and welcome to Science Island. This is a lesson that will teach the scientific method to kids of all ages. Uh, basically, it's a series of making, uh, I guess, a bunch of educated guesses and uh, checking those guesses and then modifying those guesses or the hypothesis in the end. So this is where kids will spawn right here in this beautiful artwork collection. I don't know why I built that, but that's where they spawn. Um, they're going to come over here. It's going to say, welcome to Science Island. Today's mission will be to, uh, I guess, learn and practice the scientific method. Uh, in a non-formal lab type of way. Um, we're going to be looking at the water today, Minecraftia water, the kingdom of Minecraft uh, water, and how it flows and how it functions. Um, so what they're going to do is they're going to load up here with portfolios and cameras because they're going to capture their uh, both their hypothesis uh, for each station as well as some pictures of them actually doing the lab. The goal of this is for them to go, uh, there's stations like, uh, there's five stations, like one, two, three, four, five, all color-coded. Uh, the best way to do this would have uh, sm would be to have small groups or uh, one kid individually or a group, maybe two kids, um, just go through this in a series. So start with the yellow one here and move on to the next stage and the next stage. The goal is to end on uh, the orange stage, which is the last stage on uh, the second island. Um, and doing any other alteration of that could cause problems. So let's go really quickly through what you can expect in this level. I don't plan on st uh, staying here too long, but uh, I just want to show you what to expect as a science teacher. So for all age groups, they're going to come over here, they're going to load up with water buckets and uh, some sand from this first chest. Again, the sign says grab some water and some sand. This one, this station one is uh, run by Albert Einstein. There's some information when you click on him, he motivates the kids. But basically you grab a water bucket and you're going to test a hypothesis. So you're going to come up with a, an educated guess, or the kids will, about how they think water flows in Minecraft. Then they're going to come over, grab some water, and they're going to drop a bucket of water on this tile, this white tile. So what's going to happen uh, as a teacher is the water is going to flow to the lowest point of depression, which is the ocean. So we have uh, two blocks away, so one, two, and three. So there you go, the water flows in. On the next tile, we have a little further away, so the water is still going to flow to the ocean. The next tile is a little further away, the water is still going to flow to the ocean, but then all of a sudden on this tile, when they drop the water here, it's going to scatter evenly along. So they're going to be able to tell you how many tiles away a water, uh, water will flow to the lowest depression, and then what's the breaking point? That's the goal here, is figuring out how far away from a, a depression do you have to be in order for water not to flow there, but to flow uh, evenly distributed. So that's a great little hypothesis to warm up. So they have a guess at the start, they come up with the uh, final one, they modify it based on what they see, and they move on to the purple stage. They come over here to the purple stage, and they have Dorothy Hodgkin. If you click on her, she tells, you, uh, tells the kids why she's famous. Um, in this one, we're going to talk about uh, splunking, uh, spelunking the uh, cave diving. So we're going to talk about the depth of water in a cave in Minecraft and surface light. So what they're going to do is they're actually going to come over here and they're going to jump into cave number one and look at the uh, at the light at the bottom. Uh, that's two meters deep. Then they're going to go to the three meter deep cave and look at the light at the bottom like that. Then they're going to follow the line here and they're going to go to the four meter deep cave, the five meter deep cave, and the goal is when they jump in these caves you'll see I'll jump into the cave number eight. Watch this. When you get to the bottom of cave number eight, you can see a remarkable reduction in light. So their hypothesis might have been, listen, when you're in Minecraft, the deeper you go, the less light there is. Or it might have been something different. Maybe light didn't change was their hypothesis. So as they go through the series of tests, they can figure out that the deeper you go in Minecraft, the light gets dimmer or less light. And then they can write a hypothesis about that and move on. They can take photographs of their buddies hopping in the water or whatever they want to do. Over here on the green mats, we have Isaac Newton talking about gravity. Um, we have some water buckets and some lava buckets, and I'll explain why. So you come over here, and we're going we're gonna to find out what happens when you add water to lava and lava to water. And is it uniform? Is it always the same outcome? Is it not? So what the kids are going to do is they're going to come over here to these guys, and they're going to dump lava into this pit. So throw the lava buckets in, they're going to dump the lava in, and they're going to watch the outcome. So there's four of them. So four different times they can get four different readings here and figure out, was it all the same or was it different? Then they're going to take their water buckets and dump it into the lava pits, four of them. So four different times, again. And by the end of the fourth one, they should be able to come up with a rule that's basically happening every time. Um, it may have some ifs or thans or buts, but at least they can have a true statement that they believe is true at the end. At the end of this level, just make sure they clean up. So make sure they uh, get some water and uh, mine out whatever happened here and fill it back with four water and four uh, lava for the next group coming along. So by now they've practiced having a hypothesis three times 
and checking that hypothesis and then of course modifying that hypothesis and recording it in their portfolios. So if we move on to this section with Benjamin Franklin, he talks about how much he loves uh, um, stormy days and how much he loves light. So we're going to go underneath the ground for this one. So what's going to happen here is we have an ice block and we're going to take some torches and we're going to see how many torches are needed to melt an ice block. So of course I had to get out of the light so we go into this little cave over here. Down here, a little guide explains what to do but I'll tell you, the students come over here and they grab some torches and there's the extra ice in case they need it to uh, reset the, the task. That's the goal at the end, to reset the task. There's the drain. So they're going to take a torch and they're going to put one torch right here on this first square. They're going to wait 30 seconds, 10 seconds, whatever. Then they're going to place a second torch here on this square. Then they're going to place a third torch on this square and they're going to see how many torches worth of light is needed to turn an ice block into a flowing water that of course will go down the drain. And I'll let you figure that one out. Uh, it is a standard answer every time I try it. Um, and then when it melts, all they have to do is I guess mine it out or get rid of that water, replace the ice, get rid of the torches, and they're off to the next piece. Um, but I will let you figure out how many torches it takes to melt a standard ice block in Minecraft. Okay, so again, a hypothesis about how many torches it will need they'll test it and then they'll figure out wow it really needs this many um, and is it always the rule reset it try it again figure it out and they come out with a true statement or what's what they believe is true so we're gonna go to the blue station the kids are gonna follow this uh, convoluted bridge here that I made that goes all the way to a second little island here in the next level and I'm going really quickly here in the next one is the blue station and we're going to talk about water flow and river width. So does the width of a river uh, affect the speed of the water? So what they're going to do is they're going to come up here to Mary Curry. She's going to tell them why she's famous and they're going to grab carrots. They're going to grab a whole bunch of carrots from inside this chest and basically here's what's going to happen. They're going to hop up here and there's a river that's one meter wide and they're going to throw a carrot onto the top step and watch how fast it proceeds down the cliff. So they're going to throw a carrot right there and it goes down the cliff. Then they're going to come over here with the carrots and a two meter wide river is waiting. They're going to throw a carrot onto the top step and see how fast it proceeds down to the pit. There's the three meter wide river and finally of course you get the pattern. There's the four meter wide river. So we're going to find out does the, does the river get faster when it gets wider? Does the river flow get slower when it gets wider? Or is the carrot moving down the steps at the same speed regardless of river width? That is a great hypothesis. I, I can't wait to see what the kids come up with for their guesses and then they get to check. So there's five solid, five solid, um, I guess, chances for the kids to master their hypothesis. The way I wrap this up is simple. Um, we are going to go into the cave of knowledge. Uh, the cave of knowledge and we are going to uh, put our hypothesis, the kids that came up, their hypotheses, the, the, the statements that they believe to be true, they're going to add to a sacred cave of knowledge here on the island. So they're going to grab some signs um, and they're going to head down the orange path and they're going to find a guide and she's going to tell them a little bit about the, um, what do they call it, the, um, the pool of wisdom. So let me just show you. So they're going to grab a fishing rod from here and we're going to head down into the cave. And the goal is that the kids will add some torches and some signs and all along these walls they'll put their statements that they believe to be true. For instance right here they might have in Minecraft water flows uh, at the same speed regardless of how wide the river is. Maybe two signs to make that up. And they're going to fill these caves with their knowledge. So it's the cave of knowledge. At the end for fun they come down here. Here's the pool of wisdom and there's a legend on the island that says if you can catch a fish from this pool and eat it um, you will find great wisdom in life. Uh, the guide at the top says, listen, you're already smart, so just do this for fun if you want to. But some of the kids, depending on what age group they are, they might want to come down here and either have a bath in the uh, sacred wisdom uh, pool, or they can actually come down here and catch a fish and eat it and uh, feel that they will go through the rest of their lives with wisdom. That's the legend of the island. So this has been Science Island. It Its specific mission is to teach the um, the scientific method which is like wicked valuable in schools. Uh, the, the process of having a hypothesis, checking that hypothesis, modifying that hypothesis, and then repeat if needed, or again, in this case, writing down your statement for others to evaluate and judge and test. 
So these are simple little things that they can do on this island. They all revolve around Minecraft water. I wanted to keep it simple. The original idea came from Douglas uh, Kiang, I think his last name is. Um, he's also a Minecraft mentor. Um, it was way back. It was like two to three years ago I remember hearing about that saying, I'm going to build a lesson for that. So here it is. It's finally done. Uh, I hope your kids like it. It's meant for all ages. It could be a grade 11 student or it could, all, it could be all the way down to grade 2 or 3. Um, they might have to read. That might be the only piece holding them back, being able to read some of the simple signs here. Um, the scientists thrown in are just for fun. They tell them a little bit about themselves. Uh, but other than that, this is Science Island. And maybe I'll make a series of these. Maybe it'll be Science Island and the next one will be about something else. But right now, the first one is about the scientific method. And there are five little chances for them to make a hypothesis, test it, write it down, and move on, and it all involves water in Minecraft, which is quirky and weird to begin with. So if you like it, let me know. Uh, my name is Ben Kelly. I'm a global Minecraft mentor. My Twitter handle is at BBTNB. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching.